you'll turn to your ICANN sheet to the number 10 on the second page, and I want to go through the one that is ICANN B. So what you're going to be focusing on today is I can solve problems involving measurement by selecting an appropriate measuring device in U.S. customary and metric for weight. So we're just going to focus on weight, okay? So we're in small group just because we want to practice that one more time, okay? So we're going to do our select the appropriate measuring device and we're going to talk about weight, customary and metric. So in my class that, today you saw success criteria. Right? I always wanted my students to be able to know what they're going to do before the lesson starts. Okay, and then the metric is grams and kilograms. kilograms. On small group we were working with measurement because the students were not able to successfully complete that I can statement about selecting the appropriate measuring device the first time we did it with um, an exit ticket or some type of formative assessment that I use. So we've kind of gone over this before and we just want to review that make sure at the end of our small group that you can do that by yourself. So what is that? <coughs> it's a what? Kilogram. It's a kilogram. Do you agree that's one kilogram? Okay. And everybody take a look at one of these. And what do we have there? One gram. One gram. So we're still dealing with the metric side only right now, okay? So that when we measure something, we want to know, are we going to measure it with kilograms or are we going to measure it with grams? So put one in one hand and one in the other hand. The benefit of using success criteria is so that definitely before we start the lesson, they know what we're going to be working on. So it's not like we're halfway through the lesson and the kids are kind of like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? So they definitely up front know what are we working on today and what do we want to accomplish at the end of the lesson. Yeah, a lot lighter or just a little bit lighter? A lot lighter, a lot lighter isn't it? Because that's just one. What would we measure this piece of string in? What, which device? Would we measure it in grams or would we measure it in kilograms? We have to select the appropriate device. See what that means? What would we measure it in, Jose? Grams. Grams. We'd measure that in grams, wouldn't we? Let's see. What would we measure something like this in? You want to feel it? Will we measure that with grams or kilograms? Grams. Grams. Because put that in one hand and put that in the other hand. Is that going to work? No. So the correct measuring device we would select would be what? Grams. Grams. What about that one? What do you think about that one? Almost the same. Almost the same? Okay. So we have to get that heaviness to get to that kilogram, don't we? So now we don't have any objects in front of us. So what do you think about a golden retriever? What would we measure that with? Would we measure that with, kilo with grams or with kilograms? Large dog, golden retriever or something? Kilograms. kilograms. We have to measure that in kilograms. All right, so let's put our metric away. Because at the end of today, you've got to be able to select the appropriate measuring device. Keep that in mind, right? All by yourself, OK? So that's our criteria for today. What I used to do in my classroom was I would just give the exit ticket or walk around and on my sticky notes take notes. And then I have this folder that I just wrote their names in. And so then I would say, okay, for like, if they didn't understand weight or mass, I would just write their names down. What do you think around the room might weigh an ounce? Or a couple ounces even? Oh, okay. What do you think? Could you even name something or feel something? Oh, so you're picking this up. Is this about an ounce? How's that so going? I had the information that I still have from their I can sheets, but they didn't see it. They weren't with me or on board with me. And I could still pull my intervention groups and go over what I needed to go over like I did today, but they didn't get the benefit of my initials and that they can do it. So they, this, this to me is so much more beneficial because they see it and they want to get my initials. All right, so how do you think your review went with, with identifying the appropriate measurement for weight? You think you're a little bit better with that? Okay, so what I'm gonna have you do is let's do this one together. Look at that chart. And if you measured yourself, if you go to the customary unit, I want you to write down, would you measure yourself in ton tons, ounces, or pounds? And go ahead and put the correct answer for yourself. I prepare my students to use success criteria and the ICANN statements. Um, it's something at the beginning of the unit, they get the whole entire ICANN, all the ICANN statements that match the Virginia standards of learnings because I just create them from the Virginia Standards of Learning. And so I set them up at the beginning of the unit so that they know that this is what we're going to go over in this Kilograms, unit. Right? We're going to weigh more than that, aren't we? We're going to be heavy. 
Not very good. And then the last one is a quarter. Good. And then metric. All right, everybody did a nice job on that, okay? But I was still here to kind of help you with it, okay? So the very last thing you're going to do is you're going to go back to your seats and you're going to do one on your own, okay? And you're just going to circle the correct one, if it's ounces, pounds, or tons, or if it's grams or kilograms, or the correct answer down there. And then turn that into my tray. Once I see that later today, I will go to your I can sheet, okay? And if you do get that correct, then I will give you my initials that the, you can select the appropriate measuring devices for weight. If I had to give advice to other teachers about using success criteria, I would definitely make sure that they present what they want the students to learn up front. That doesn't have to be an ICANN sheet, that's just an idea that works for me. But I think the students either, you know, whether it's on your smart board or your chalkboard or paper or just verbally saying that, have them repeat it. They need to know at the beginning of the lesson what are they learning today and what will they take away at the end of the day. And of course, as a teacher, you need to have a way to measure that and a way to see did they master or hit the standard of a success criteria.